Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel, RV Tips from Jan. Today's subject, so why is it a bad idea to try to hook up your RV to your dryer outlet? Did you ever have a situation where you're researching a subject and the deeper you get into that research, the more questions that you have? Well, that's pretty much where I am on this particular topic. But with that said, there's been a lot of chatter that I've seen on the internet, especially from newer RVers who are asking this very question. They want to be able to hook up their camper in their driveway and be able to use all the appliances while they're loading it up and getting ready for their next outing. And particularly if it's a hot day, they want to run that air conditioner. And if they plug it into the 110 outlet in their garage using the appropriate adapter, many times they find they're blowing that breaker. So the question that people are asking is, geez, this four prong plug that I have my dryer in my utility room looks a lot like the 50 amp four prong plug that are on a lot of the RVs. Are they compatible? Can I indeed plug my RV system into that dryer outlet. Let's jump into this subject. Well, most of us are familiar with the two types of RV electrical hookups. The one on the far left is the 30 amp three prong. The one on the far right is the 50 amp four prong. And many of us, as we look at that 50 amp four prong plug, would say, geez, that looks a lot like my dryer outlet. But the fact is, they're quite different. As we look at the text below, we see that although a 50 amp service for a recreational vehicle or RV is connected to four wires and uses four prong plug, it is still a three pole service with only a hot neutral and ground connection. It is different from a conventional 120 volt system and that there are two 120 volt hot feeds or legs, each at 50 amps. If we were to look at the campground service panel schematic, we'd see something like this. And we're very familiar with, uh, with this layout, with your two hot leads, your neutral wire, your ground. If we were to look at the campground wiring diagram in terms of how they accommodate both the 30 amp and the 50 amp RVs, you would see this kind of electrical diagram. On the lower left is 30 amp plug. On the lower right is the four prong 50 amp plug. And again, as we look at that four prong 50 amp plug, some of us would say that looks a lot like my dryer outlet plug. When we talk about our dryers, we'll see that there is both a three wire and four wire configuration. The three wire being older, the four wire being the newer. At one time, the electrical code allowed for one insulated wire to function as both a ground and neutral and the 120 and 240. 40 volt combo circuits. But now all such circuits must use a four wire scheme. Therefore, our new dryers and our new electric ranges likely have four prong plugs for the newer system. While our older dryers ranges would have the three prong plug. If we look at the configuration for the three prong 240, 250 volt plugs, we can see that there's many different types of styles out there. And of course, this doesn't help us to sort through this question about, can we use our dryer outlet? It just further adds to the complexity of this issue. Likewise, we see these variations in terms of the three pole four wire grounding system for the 250 volt system. So this is the four prong newer layout that you would find for your 250 volt. So as we address this question, 
why is it a bad idea to try to hook up our RV to our dryer outlet? There's really a number of factors that we need to take into consideration. Number one, if we modify our dryer inlet so that it can be used to accommodate our RV, we likely will be in violation of our local electrical codes. Number two, if we make this modification and indeed plug our RV into that 240 volt outlet, there's a significant risk of electrical failure to our RV electrical system, including the inverter, the batteries, the power panel, the microwave. There are stories on the internet of people who have tried this, thinking that this was a great way to solve the problem of how do they park their RV in their driveway and use all the appliances while they're getting ready to go out on the road. They hook it up to the dryer 240 volt outlet and they fry all their electronics in their RV. When they meet with their dealer, their dealer gives them a quote to do all the necessary repairs and they find that the cost of the repairs exceeds their current value that they have in that RV. So essentially the RV is a total loss. And not only do you have the potential damage to the RV, but also you have potential damage to your home electrical system. But the bottom line for me is when I read this, neither our RV insurance or home insurance is going to cover any electrical loss that we have as a result of plugging our RV into the 240 volt dryer outlet. If we do that, we take all the risk on ourselves. There are many videos on the internet of RVers who have indeed tried this and learned some hard and expensive lessons from it. If you want to contract with a local electrician to do the work for you, please make sure that that electrician understands the electrical system on your RV. There's a story on the internet a family that contracted with an electrician. He came out, he put in the outlet, he assumed it was similar to the wiring for the dryer. So he wired it as if it was for the dryer. And when they hooked it up to the trailer, it blew all the electronics. The electrician did not know that there was a difference in that four prong wiring system for the trailer versus the dryer. He thought they were very similar or one and the same. I hope this video has been helpful to you. It was a great subject for me to dig into. I have lots of questions and I still have questions. You may have some thoughts and suggestions that you can share with me and those who see this video. I would really appreciate hearing those. Thanks so much for watching, but as we say at the end of all of our videos, please continue to be safe and stay well.